What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to be talking about Scream 7 in this video here today and going over what David Arquette recently made a comment on to 2Fab about the upcoming film and how this could back up and put to bed some expectations about what could go on in Scream 7. We'll also talk about what Melissa Barrera said at Monster Mania that she was recently in, a, in attendance for. But David Arquette gave an interview with 2Fab recently where he made some interesting comments that will hopefully again put to bed some expectations for Scream 7. He said, I'm really excited to see what Kevin does since he wrote the first one and he's such a great filmmaker and artist and writer. He added of Williamson. He said how he understands that world. It'll be really interesting to see his take on it and bringing the whole original crew back together. It is a very FOMO moment. So obviously he has fear of missing out. A comment like this, though, coupled with other comments he gave throughout this interview, mentioning how he's coming to terms with Dewey's death and just thinks posit positively on the character, makes it a safe bet that Sam and the core four are not being ignored because Dewey died during their run. Screen five and six will most likely remain canon. This doesn't immediately guarantee that Dewey won't return, though, because being dead doesn't mean that you can't come back despite many acting like they've never seen Scream 3 before. Dewey could appear in a flashback, a dream sequence, some sort of home video, or some visual depiction of Sidney imagining life if he was still around, while continuing to respect that he is maggot food and shouldn't return in the wrong capacity. Honestly, if 5 and 6 were films I found to be bad, which I don't, the material still isn't that bottom of the barrel hogwash that it should be ignored. It just simply isn't. As unrealistic as 6 can be for some, I'd argue that Scream 3 is still taking the cake since it wants to sell us on this idea that one man was able to perform everything we see in Scream 3 by himself before revealing themselves to Sydney. But yes, David's comments make me confident that 5 and 6 are going to be remaining canon. Hell, if 5 wasn't canon, we wouldn't even know what Kirby's fate is we still would be up in the air with that and then considering that Kevin Williamson himself originally killed Kirby I wouldn't put it past him to then kill Kirby which is fine but I'm just saying that that's another big reason why I don't think we should be ignoring five and six granted some people think we should and it's rooted in some of the most idiotic reasoning such as the fact that they just didn't like the Carpenter sister storyline again even if I didn't like the Carpenter sister storyline, I want to try to engage with the material that we got. Was it that bad that I need to now ignore and retcon? No, I could still prefer Sydney's story and prefer the, the movies we have with Sydney, which I do because that's one of my comfort characters. But the fact remains, what was going on with the Carpenters wasn't so bad that I now need to wash it or flush it down the toilet and start with a new slate and say this is taking place such and such years later after Scream 4. And you know, those last two movies, yeah, they didn't happen. That'd be a complete train wreck, I think, in my opinion. And you would be teetering further into Halloween territory because now you would have a new timeline of films you can watch versus the other timeline of films. I don't need that for Scream. I don't need the choose your own adventure route for the Scream franchise. It's been doing fine all this time. Let's keep it that way. Let's leave it alone and just accept what we have. Now, when it comes to Melissa Barrera, Melissa Barrera was at Monster Mania recently, and she made a comment when asked about how she feels about not moving forward with the screen films. She said she thinks that question will get her in trouble. So she hopes they can understand that she's not gonna entertain that question. So then I've seen some people sending this to me online, speculating that this could be some sort of plot twist that's upcoming. I have seen stuff rumbling online about this particular plot twist. To me, though, there are two reasons that are popping out to me as to why she said this. One, it could be about the terms of that dismissal spyglass put into effect last November. Or it could be just her acknowledging that her honest answer to a question like that isn't something she wants to speak on or speak out about because it could jeopardize what she's looking forward to in her career. My bet is on that last one since Melissa has never seemed like someone to not want to, like she doesn't seem like she would hesitate to speak her mind. But she does seem like someone who is very aware, 
that there is a time and place for things. And with a question like that, and if she really has a certain type of answer she wants to give, she doesn't want to give that answer right now because of what it could do going forward for her career. And she doesn't want to jeopardize certain things. Or she just simply just does not want to give a answer that she knows is false. I think Melissa has a very specific answer she would have liked to have gave for that question. And because of the nature of it and whatever could have been used for clicks and used for headlines from other trades if they caught wind of it and her genuine thoughts on it that's probably why she's avoiding it she's trying to avoid something that can be taken out of context something that can be used to paint her in a certain light when she's just really giving her genuine opinion on how she feels about not being involved in any more screen movies there's probably some not animosity i want to say but like just some maybe some frustration that at what happened because all spyglass had to do was talk to her so if she was going to give a genuine answer she just decided you know what i'm not going to do that right now we're not here to talk about that let's just move on to the next thing i don't think it's rooted in us having some big plot twist down the road and if you've been online you know what that plot twist is that people are speculating on if it happens it happens i don't think that's what it is i think she was just trying to respectfully avoid touching on topics that she would like to be genuine about but not in the wrong sort of capacity or in the wrong setting that it could be used against her and start jeopardizing things that she's actually looking forward to beyond screen because of course hopefully she can have a career beyond screen she has your monster coming out soon which i am going to definitely try to go see in theaters if i can depends on what's happening with my schedule at the moment october itself is already going to be a packed month for some certain things so i might be actually not watching your monster in theaters i could end up watching it at home but she probably again just does not want to jeopardize stuff like that you guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below again i think david's comments are a safe indication that we are not going to be ignoring scream 5 and scream 6 if that makes you upset so be it oh well too bad tough shit if you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe, turn on post notification, you can never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.